welcome to ATCM the emergency medicine channel today we'll be discussing about a elderly male who came to hear with complaints of uh, acute onset of breathlessness so the 76 year old male was brought to hear with complaints of acute onset of breathing difficulty since that day morning but he has what are the causes for acute onset of breathlessness in the emergency room cardiac failure can chin and precipitate pulmonary edema which was acute onset of breathlessness ിക് <laughs> 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 Uh, then again, the tachypnea may be secondary to some other issues like an anxiety or pain or something can also present the acute uh, respir- increased respiratory rate and all that. Children? Uh, children, uh, then foreign body obstruction can be one of the primary causes. Okay. So foreign mm. body, pneumothorax, cardiac failure mm. and any other causes like COPD, asthma, exacerbation, IAD, pneumonia. Mm. But uh, rapidly onset breathlessness is mostly cardiac failure mm. and foreign body in children, mm. COPD, asthma in adults. Mm. So this patient is a 76 year old male uh, came to here with complaints of shortness of breath since that day morning but he has been having some symptoms since past two months so my initial 10 second assessment he was conscious oriented and obeying to my commands but he was significantly tachypneic so i went to the primary survey uh, his airway was patent there was no signs of any obstruction there was no sign there was signs of uh, no signs of any pulling or secretion or anything but uh, some strider was heard some strider like sound was heard from the airway how do you differentiate strider from wheeze ഫ്രംസ്റ്റ് <laughs> the quality wise the quality strider has like, like a harsh harsh, harsh, harsh loud sound and it is fixed the sound is fixed not like uh, asthma it is mm. polyphonic mm. multiple area multiple sounds mm. strider wherever you oscillate the same bit. sound mm. inspiration expression same sound mm. standing sitting on any position same sound mm. so same sound in all areas types of uh, uh, breathing and uh, all uh, positions mm. then it is strider mostly it is strider mm. what is the importance of strider in emergency room Uh, Why we are more, more mm. thinking about strider and uh, uh, strider is actually a sign of like impending respirate and like airway obstruction. Mm-hmm. So we have to immediately tackle and like for, find what the cause for it and we have to immediately mm-hmm. deal with it. So or else it can go for a complete obstruction. So it could either be like an acute foreign body obstruction or maybe some secretion or something maybe goes in that. The most common mistake done by your doctor is they give nebulization for all strider patients. Mm-hmm. So it is actually not required. Mm-hmm. many patients with strider you can see patient will be on nebulization mm. that is because we are not able to identify whether it is strider or wheeze mm-hmm. that is a reason mm. okay and which also, type of patients you are commonly uh, getting this strider uh, usually in children uh, secondary to like some okay. viral infection children like croup yeah. and all can present okay. strider and okay. also maybe some foreign body can also be presenting like usually. okay that are all children and in adult, adult cases is usually secondary to like some air obstruction secondary some malignancy or malignancy. something yeah. most common thing is malignancy malignancy mm-hmm. airway malignancy mm-hmm. or uh, malignancy surrounding the airway mm-hmm. so it could either They be a lymphoma com- or maybe like a lung okay. malignancy like that so suddenly the strider disappears mm-hmm. what does it denote uh, one thing maybe the patient may be going into like a complete obstruction complete airway obstruction, airway obstruction. Okay. That is the most probable reason. Yeah. And or sometimes that sometimes it may be like a foreign body it may got dislodged and gone into deeper uh, this thing area of the lungs. So the strider may have cleared. Complete air obstruction or respiratory mm. arrest. Mm. Okay. So our patient basically a <coughs> or a elderly man with two months of some breathing difficulty history is there but it worsened that day morning so he came to the ER. So initial technical second assessment was significantly tachypneic. and on a primary survey airway is some having to have some such strider and he was maintaining this airway and breathing part he had a respiratory rate of 28 per minute and on auscultation he had bilateral ronchi extensive ronchi on bilateral lung fields there were no crepitations noted 
and circle uh, what you have to understand is ronga is different from strider mm. whatever strider you are hearing here yeah, because but, uh, of s- obstruction mm. same thing you are hearing all over the lung in that patient it is not actually mm. ronga ronga mm. is entirely different from strider mm. once you understand there is an obstruction you know wherever you are auscultating that all are due to strider, strider. Only. don't mm. tell again ronga ronga okay. means it's a uh, airway obstruction which mm. is reversible condition mm-hmm. treatment is nebulization. nebulization here treatment is not nebulization mm. so that's why i am repeatedly telling this is the commonest mistake done by any doctor mm. they think that it is vis and we unnecessarily give nebulization and respira- uh, respiratory rate was 28 per minute and spo2 was maintained 92% in room air uh, circulatory part he had a uh, heart rate of 90 per minute and uh, blood pressure was 130 by 70 mm. uh, he had a full score of gcs and he was obeying commands and temperature he was febrile So at this point, uh, in order to like elevate his symptoms, and initially we thought it was like uh, uh, we so we started him on nebulization with O2, and we continued our survey. An ABG was taken, but the sample we got was a VBG. Uh, the pH was 7.44, pH two was 50.9, PO2 was 45, and bicarb was 34.2. So it has gone towards the alkalotic, alkalotic side. side. Whether it is a, a, a arterial sample or venous sample, the difference in pH is around uh, 0.3. Uh, so it is towards the alkalotic side alkalotic what side. may be the reason for alkalosis uh, concern this actually vbg the thing is a patient is having an elevated bicarb of 34.2 mm. and also is a had a history of like a uh, chronic copd mm. so it could be like the patient may be having a baseline pso2 like a, around like more than 50 like that and now the current issue may be he is going into respiratory alkalosis okay see he is having a, a respiratory acidosis mm. and compensation has occurred mm. on top of that now he has be- uh, he has developed a respiratory alkalosis, alkalosis. so it has become a dual uh, mixed ma- acid mixed ba- acid based disorder mm. both are in respiratory system itself mm-hmm. okay. that's why we are getting like a compensated by bi- elevated bicarb with an alkalotic picture in the pH okay. so that is for vbg and ecg was also taken was showing only sinus rhythm with 92 beats per minute and no significant ecg changes and so you went to deep into the history so basically a 76 year old man he is a non case of type 2 diabetes copd and he already also had a history of cad in the past post cabg done about 5 years back so he is having some progressive uh, breathlessness since past 2 months insidious and onset uh, which was progressive in nature and actually uh, since past uh, few weeks he is having some audible airway sounds and also he intermittently complained of some cough with whitey expectorations since past 4 5 months but they were not taking any exact treatment for that but he was at home only uh, there was no history of any fever or anything uh, there was no history of any chest pain uh, also he complained of some facial edema which has been progressing over the past one month along with some bilateral upper limb edema but there was no history of any reduced urine output there was no history of any uh, like uh, Uh, like pedal edema or anything only on the upper limb he is having edema along with some facial puffiness and what is the cause for facial puffiness uh, one thing could be like uh, like um, significant protein era secondary to some renal dysfunction and maybe like nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome and then it could be like anything like an upper uh, thoracic renal obstruction like an svc obstruction which can cause upper uh, arm with facial obstruction then uh, then any lymphatic obstruction can again mm-hmm. cause hypothyroidism one of the common condition mm-hmm. there also you can get a facial edema mm-hmm. but that will be more like a non pitting edema mm-hmm. but uh, svc syndrome and uh, nephrotic syndrome are classical conditions where you get facial edema mm-hmm. okay so with this history he came to ear with compli- uh, for further management there was no history of any non drug allergies uh, and he is taking medications for this diabetes His upper limbs also edema at us ah. how do you differentiate uh, edema from the svc syndrome or lymphatic obstruction um, lymphatic obstruction can be there in malignancy mm. can get uh, uh, medias uh, mm. axillary nodes and nerves and mm. can get uh, a polymedium no. how do you differentiate mm. you ask the patient to lift the hand mm. normally lymphatic edema due to malignancy obstruction mm. it will not be drained even in svc syndrome also it will not be drained Mm-mm. it is due to some other reason uh-huh. uh, it can be Mm-hmm. drain drain okay yes. so if there is an obstruction then mm-hmm. it will be very difficult to drain that limb mm-hmm. lymphatic edema will never drain because mm-hmm. it's completely obstruction it's extra vascular space mm-hmm. this type of edema slowly that uh, because svc syndrome obstruction slowly that relieves mm-hmm. after after some time so this patient is taking medications for diabetes and uh, this cad and by dual antiprelis and everything is taking 
and on our arrival his last meal was anti diabetic medicine can produce fluid retention uh, retention uh, pyoglitazone pyoglitazone that's why pyoglitazone is not recommended in cardiac failure mm-hmm. okay okay so <clears throat> on arrival his last meal was about 8 hours back and and so there was no any other significant events contributing to the current symptoms so on reassessment actually patient's tachypnea has slightly improved but he is still having some desaturation while we are taking off the nebulization mask but after that we started him on uh, oxygen mask the 6 liters to maintain his uh, spo2 and at around like 6 liters is maintaining only 93 94 maximum what is the mental status and the urine output uh, he is conscious oriented uh, mm-hmm. even though he is complaining of uh, pyridine like pyridine lapolim edema there's no history of any reduced urine output recently he is having good urine output and is conscious oriented at this time he is a non ckd patient no a copd a mm. cad and type 2 diabetes no. thank you uh, so i went to the clinical examination uh, he is again conscious oriented and also uh, uh, chest bilateral striders are there and then s1 s2 was heard abdomen was soft and non tender and he is having a full score of gcs and this patient actually after the initial primary management he is having some persistent breathlessness is still persisting but uh he is somewhat comfortable with o2 supplementation so for further evaluation we went with an uh, like a chest x ray was done x ray was not showing any like any lung parenchymal issues were there there's no like any hastiness or anything was noted there was no features of any effusion or anything in the x ray but at this uh, we suspected some mediastinal widening in the central area mm-hmm. uh, considering his uh, symptoms we went with the mdct thorax and it was showing a um, a mass lesion was uh, shown in the uh, this thing uh, mdct chest uh, uh, suggestive of uh, svc obstruction and this mass was extending to the paratracheal region mm-hmm. and this was the only uh, thing we found in the mdct was no signs of any effusion or any pulmonary or anything and considering this he was admitted for further evaluation and once he was stabilized uh, we went with the uh, ebus mm-hmm. the endoscopical uh, ultrasound mediated like biopsy was taken and this biopsy was showing which is a adenocarcinoma a lot of atypical cells were said, uh, uh, seen and also the sample was again sent for ihc and further pathological study so basically this patient initially had a breathlessness which uh, symptomatically managed x ray was showing some mediastinal widening and we went with the mdct thorax and were showing some lesion extending from the mediastinum to the paratracheal region and also showing some features of svc obstruction and considering that we took an ebus ebus biopsy was taken and biopsy is showing a large necrotic mass extending from the right hilum infiltrating trachea causing significant constriction at the level of trachea and about a 3.5 cm heterogeneous necrotic mass was taken for biopsy and it was showing adenocarcinoma as the primary pathological abnormality and samples were sent for cytology and ihc study he is a smoker uh, he is a chronic smoker chronic smoker and also had a history of copd intermittently taking inhalers not on regular medications Uh, so considering symptoms actually uh, post admission on the third day symptoms worsened basically his strider worsened and he was put on niv and any his... neurological findings are there in this patient neurological, neurological finding you can get in superior uh, mediastinal tumors uh, thing is actually superior venical obstruction can sometimes present with like uh, increased icit and like cerebral edema like features also okay. uh, in severe cases okay. so basically if a patient is having some sa- patients can have ptosis mm. horner syndrome can be there mm mm-hmm. okay so that also we have to examine hmm. so a patient with uh, like a severe uh, superior venical syndrome we have a grading system which we have from 0 to 5 it can give some idea regarding his prognosis and also uh, further care of management so the dictum of the basic idea is like a patient with significant breathlessness with an svc obstruction uh, the average life span they are like uh, saying especially in case malignancy is like 6 months okay. uh, so grading is from 0 to 5 0 will be like an asymptomatic patient radiological features of some will also be all uh, when you are taking an x ray you see uh, mediastinal mediastinal some widening will be there. there is no obstruction there is no mm. obstructive findings in patient mm. the patient may not be that symptomatic also second will be like one is mild he will be some, having some edema in the head and neck and incidentally we find some obstruction a uh, grade 2 will be moderate he will be having significant edema in the head and neck with some functional impairment like uh, some mild dyspnea cough and more mild to moderate impairment of head and jaw movements and all that and also some visual disturbance may also be said by some patients due to ocular edema this will be grade 2 and grade 3 will be severe it will be like mild to moderate cerebral edema the patient may come complaints of severe headache and dizziness with some altered sensorium 
then mild to moderate laryngeal edema and also some diminished cardiac activity also uh, like you still think in syncope and all that can be seen and fourth will be life threatening in which the patient will come with severe uh, like a significant cerebral edema so this patient may even present with like features of uh, like coma and all that the patient can present or maybe he is in a confusion of tender state on arrival in ear and also significant laryngeal edema can cause stridor again uh, significant other uh, cardiac issues can go into hemodynamic compromise resulting in syncope or like hypotension persistent hypotension and also renal insufficiency what are the paraneoplastic syndromes associated with the lung malignancies ah lung malignancies ah one thing will be um, see uh, hypercalcemia the commonest thing Uh, most common is SIDs. SIDs. Ah. Yeah. SIDs is the most common. So mm. hyponatremia can be there. Mm. Then, hmm. Yeah. So can I auto autoimmune encephalitis? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Another important thing. Mm. So these are the things you have to. Hypercalcemia can be there. At uh, hyponatremia, hyponatremia can be there. Ah. Then can I autoimmune encephalitis? Hmm. Mm. These are the common findings. Paranoid plus uh, with uh, lung malignancy. Then lung malignancy. Mm. So, considering our patient, the patient comes between like grade two to three. That is moderate to severe uh, grade of SVC obstruction. So, the treatment plan actually suppose we are getting like an uh, initial plan of adeno uh, malignancy as the primary uh, this thing diagnosis. One option will be radiotherapy, like a palliative radiotherapy. But to, in emergency room, these things are not practical. Not practical. So, uh-huh. what we can give, offer to the patient? No. Yeah. So emergency point of view actually the a patient coming with this kind of symptoms we will be approaching just like any other patient from starting from a b c so first thing will be like we have to assess the airway to look for any impending respiratory failure uh, so especially in case of a, like an svc obstruction uh, there can be an incidence like uh, we have to expect a difficult airway mm-hmm. even if you are planning for like an emergency intubation this patient there's a high chance that we may not be able to intubate because the size of the obstruction can actually Uh, process over the uh, processing trachea and can cause further obstruction. So suppose the patient is having like an impending failure, and we have time to arrange for intubation. It's better to go for like a properly elective intubation, like if possible, an awake intubation. <coughs> and suppose the patient is again, we are planning for like an emergency collapse, and we are going for RSA. After an attempt, if you're not able to like uh, like intubate the patient, we have to go for other plan, like uh, other options for failed intubation, like a cricothyrotomy or maybe even lower also. So assessing the airway, airway we check for the patient's current status, whether airway is patent or is maintainable. These two things we assess, and suppose the patient's airway is not maintainable at this point, we go for RSA, rapid sequence intubation. And if that so we only assess the airway difficult airway in this. A difficult patient. airway. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the alarming signs is stridor only. Stridor mm-hmm. is actually uh, like a alarming sign for significant airway obstruction. Mm-hmm. Other things actually like in any other patient we go for like look evaluate lemon lemon score we'll check. Mm-hmm. That is look. Uh, look we we look for any obvious signs of airway difficulty like short neck or neck uh, reduced neck mobility and also the patient's any uh, obvious uh, jaw deformity or any uh, microdactnia any difficulty any in this particular patient uh, what this patient a dentulous patient or a not dentulous uh, but no patient, dentures uh, no dentures yeah, okay then but this patient got teeth uh, mm. so we have no issues then a dentulous or an uh, this thing dentures uh, then Like any previous history of any this thing, uh, cervical uh, neck mobility, uh, neck mobility, okay, osteoarthritis, something we have to rule out. No short neck, no obesity. Mm. Ah. Okay, good. Uh, no What is the comfortable patient. position for this patient? Mm. See, this is an extra luminal, mm. extensive cause for this obstruction. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So maybe our usual hyperextension may not be like possible in this patient. Can you? Pardon? Can, our usual way of hyperextending the neck may can cause mm. even further worsening of obstruction. Okay. So even a neutral position also can be tried. So what will be an ideal choice? Uh, awake intubation. Like awake intubation. Mm. How will you intubate awake intubation? Awake intubation. Actually, we have to uh, use either uh, like uh, we can g- um, give drugs like ketamine and then uh, ketamine. Mm. So most important thing uh, is physical section. One thing is intracerebral pressure. Ah, okay. okay. Ketamine this should be. So this controversy still. Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. people say it is mm. used. Some, okay. So basically, the, the next option is. Uh, Propofol. Propofol. What mm. is the uh, problem with this patient? This particular type of patient. Uh, if the patient is initially. Is an aged person, mm. orthostatic hypotension, maybe uh, anticipated. Mm. Initially, if it's hypotension. Free and you have to evaluate. Mm. Is a non-diabetic. Mm. Again, uh, autonomic. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. The imbalance may be there. Hmm. Then. Hmm. Then accommodate. 
attempted mm. so what will happen you use this adjectives ஒன்சியஸ் <laughs> Mm-hmm. So this will worsen the mm-hmm. area. So that's mm-hmm. why you are opting for and awake intubation. Awake, awake intubation, no need for any induction mm-hmm. agent or uh, this. Uh, if at all give, necessary. Uh, uh, we can give local spray for. Ah, uh, local topical spray. Mm-hmm. What type of spray? What is the uh, first and? Like no, in two person we can give uh, this thing. local spray can be applied over the uh, so endomucosa. So spray spray for that. So uh-huh. in a higher percentage, up to ten percent spray is there. But with mm-hmm. that tip, uh, or a uh, long point tip, maybe long there. tip we can. Mm-hmm. and it will be bronchoscope mm. use a uh, video laryngoscope mm. or a bronchoscope mm. so that we can go little further down into the mm. uh, trachea mm-hmm. and see what is the extent of any obstruction or anything mm-hmm. pre and we can assess mm-hmm. straight from the larynx vocal cord mm-hmm. we can have a look mm-hmm. then uh, uh, through the bronchoscope itself we can pass this tube mm-hmm. and then in intubation in an awake position, awake position with mild sedation mm-hmm. okay that, that will be better mm-hmm. procedural sedation mm-hmm. So from ED side basically is suspecting a patient with a SPC obstruction, we have to like always arrange a backup before even attempting for intubation whenever possible. Mm-hmm. And so the first thing will be like a failed airway. If RSI is failing then we can again pull out the tube and try for back mass ventilation. And also other all other difficult airway procedures we can try like extra glottic devices we can use. Uh, if it's again failing we have to go for like cricothyrotomy if not contraindicated. Mm-hmm. and also if the, we have time then we can go for other options like flexible or rigid endoscopy or video laryngoscopy if available and also like other optical device anything is available in the department we can try for uh, so finally uh, after all this uh, we will be going for a uh, post intubation management and in this patient the thing is one thing see any of this patient may need a long term uh, airway maintenance uh, so only tracheostomy so, can also uh, tracheostomy whether possibility we have to do first mm. to check it like mm. the tumor where it is Location. exactly extending mm. see so possible ideal in the beginning itself we can opt for a tracheostomy mm. so that will help in the way uh, afterwards they are going for surgical or radiotherapy mm. everything okay so id point of view one thing will be difficult intubation or airway management a second the breathing part uh, the patient will not improve even with nebulization so whatever we give because the ideal issue will be in the uh, like the management this patient scene. like uh, after all it is Initially itself, if we go for a tracheostomy, mm. that will be the best option. Mm. Instead of uh, electric tracheostomy, instead of making patient suffer, mm. uh, initially itself, uh, tracheostomy will be the best option. Mm. Uh, Second, will be breathing. Breathing actually, though, we can go for supplementary oxygen. That will be the only thing we can give. And also, um, after a biopsy is taken, we can go for high dose steroids. Steroids can actually uh, reduce the edema and can actually uh, help the patient breathe better. So, sir, hydrocerotes can be one option we can give no, to the what patient. What type of edema steroids will act in? Uh, laryngeal edema. Laryngeal edema due to? Uh, like this patient actually... Uh, actually, the obstruction is a extrinsic cause. Uh, mm. So, unless otherwise there is an edema due to uh, uh, something which can only. be rectified by steroid, there is the steroid may not have any action mm. at all. Mm. Uh, so only if you are identifying it like more like an like emergency secondary to that uh, SPC of uh, SPC obstruction occurring then only we can use steroids steroids will so not reduce the what sir is telling steroid will not reduce the size of the size tumor. of the but uh, it only reduces the edema caused by the tumor mm. inflammation surrounding the mm. tumor so it's only a transient effect immediately mm. you can do one or two days mm. by the time you, uh, they have to do for definitely uh, rt uh, radiotherapy has to be done mm. So previously the initial It's called as debulking 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 by mm. you know, by steroid surgical or uh, by uh, steroid is not debulking ah. steroid is only mm. anti inflammatory debulking is by radiotherapy either surgical or uh, palliative therapy what route you will administer the medications uh the swc obstruction other alternative line again whatever reaches by the ivc mm 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 Uh-huh, okay. Okay. Yeah, all the drugs to this, again, it will cause more uh-huh. so the, the route is better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Femoral line is something yeah. you can put. 
so airway part and breathing part again uh, steroids or, or supplementary oxygen then circulatory part uh, so especially if you're going for high production or something we can go for fluid resuscitation again as i said better to go for the lower limb uh, lines better than upper limb because of obstruction then the patient may present with acute onset of like decreased sensory and secondary to cerebral edema this patient have even managed like any other patient we have to like keep him a head in elevated position and also we can start him on and diuretics and mannitol can also be given in case of like a, a significant edema and also 3% saline can also be initiated. This is all in like so conservative management but also we have to think about the resolving the primary cause that is the SVC obstruction. So if a patient is coming with SVC obstruction there can so be multiple... What thing, see uh, whatever the um, anti-edema measures you are, the brain edema may be recurring mm. because of the SVC. Primary cause won't so be... Any so vascular right. standing can be temporarily done mm -hmm. to relieve this. Mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. So, patient is coming with SPC obstruction, multiple causes can be there. Uh, so, so basically the main uh, vessels are subclavian, brachiocephalic and then superior vena cava. Obstruction can happen at any level and uh, the common causes are a patient already in ICU or something if happening, uh, this thing is happening, it could be like secondary to an intervening catheter. Like a central venous catheter can have thrombosis and again causing this obstruction. And suppose the patient may be a CKD patient having again a central line like for dialysis can also cause the same issue. So if you're getting a patient with that kind of uh, like an indolent line, we have to think about a specific obstruction in that kind of patients. Second will be like a patient is having who are having implanted uh, cardiac devices like an AS reader pacemaker. There have been multiple incidences which this may also cause some edema or local inflammation causing SVC obstruction. Third will be our condition like a acute malignancy which is again causing obsession in this kind of patients. So, the most important it? cause is SPC thrombus. Thrombus. Ah. Not, not, okay. mm. not uh, like uh, very rare. Mm. So, SPC thrombus can again be an acute cause of SPC obstruction and in that ED management we can even try for like uh, you can give anticoagulants in ED itself like an heparin initial dose can be given or low molecular low heparin can be given. From ED itself as an initial dose for initial management. And malignancy again, uh, like an average, uh, like more than 60% of SPC obstruction can be secondary to malignancy, primary from the lungs or like from a lymphoma or something causing obstruction over the SVC. So, this kind of patients, the primary treatment used to be previously like palliative RT as early as possible. Now, actually, they have uh, different modes of management according to the severity grading which we discussed earlier. So, once we grade the patient, uh, one thing, one option is for radiotherapy, uh, second is for actually any surgical options, but initially if possible, uh, we can put a stent and make the uh, this thing SVC dilated. So, intravascular uh, management will be the first priority in this, uh, the, as per the current guidelines. So, whether it is secondary to a thrombus or secondary to an external obstruction like a malignancy, the current guidelines are suggesting that uh, the first plan will be to like go for an, like an intravascular approach to uh, put a stent and remove or uh, dilate the SVC and reduce the symptoms then we go for definitive management whether it's actually debulking therapy or like a therapy or like a medical management so this patient actually after the ct guide biopsy report came as adenocarcinoma we went with a palliative rt and after that he has clinically improved because his breathing difficulty has come down he now also is continuing uh, continuing on niv but sometimes he is getting better and uh, we are waiting for the ihc report for further uh, like uh, chemo and other managements so that's our case, basically an elderly male who came with complaints of breathing difficulty, progressive over the past two months with upper limb edema with facial puffiness and on arrival we had initially uh, some, uh, stabilized the patient with supplementary O2, then we took an x-ray showing some medicinal widening even with the MDCT thorax by showing a mass in the lungs, we went with the EBUS and biopsy was taken, was showing an adenocarcinoma. Well, so after stabilization we went with a palliative RT and after that the edema everything has come down and also in ED we also give a, a bolus of this thing um, uh, steroids are also given because of significant difficulty and once the RT has started the patient is clinically improving currently and he's uh, like we are kind of still also evaluating him for further management what is member 10 sign member 10 sign uh, either raise both hands then uh, if there is any obstruction uh, we will uh, we'll be seeing uh, that discoloration on the face. That is mm. mainly in retro, retrosternal goiter you get. Mm -hmm. And here also something similar so to that, can but mm -hmm. it is without raising the hand itself you can see. Mm -hmm. it. mm -hmm. okay. Okay.
So currently this patient is containing his treatment in ICU and it's clinically improving. Okay. okay. So depending on the level of obstruction, clinically you can make out where is the level of obstruction. But mm. for an ER physician, it doesn't mm. uh, like uh, it, it won't give any. Uh, it mm. is not our priority. Mm. But for a uh, MD medicine or mm. MD pulmonologist, that is also very important. Mm. Depending where is the lesion, above esophagus vein, mm. at the level of esophagus, below esophagus vein, mm. all clinical findings are different. Mm -hmm. When we have a CT scan, we don't uh, go and discuss that parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. How was ERV was managed for this patient? Uh, this patient uh, didn't have any like uh, much issues after the nebulization and all that. He was somewhat okay. We Pardon? only start uh, continue with the supplementary oxygen. Supplementary oxygen. Mm -hmm. Was there any tracheal involvement, radiological imaging waves? Radiologically, it was a bit more lower down only. Uh, oh, no. uh, lower down in the trachea or in the bifurcation or? Uh, just above the hilum. Pardon? Just above the hilum was the lesion. Just above the hilum. Mm -hmm. Okay, that means uh, right or left or both? Right side, right side. Right side. Mm -hmm. That's why the trachea is free. Mm -hmm. So, it's not extending. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, the tracheal cartilage, tracheomalacia may be there. Mm -hmm. So, the tracheal collapse partially may be there. Mm -hmm. In such cases, um, non-invasive positive pressure ventilation may be able to open this uh -huh. trachea. So especially it is uh, children, mm -hmm. tracheal collapse this trachea is very soft structure. Mm -hmm. The cartilages are not well developed. Mm -hmm. That's why even slight extension will cause obstruction, mm -hmm. narrowing of the lumen mm -hmm. diameter. Mm -hmm. Fraction also will obstruct. Mm -hmm. So we all, in such cases, um, there is a um, uh, collapsing nature, we can give positive pressure ventilation, non-invasive. <laughs> The teacher may improve the oxygenation. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks.